Thank you so much, guys. Now I'm going to start presenting since the time is pressing us, obviously. Now the roadmap of our, of our presentation <laughs> this time will be, first of all, drivers, which is pushing XDR as our main topic forward. Uh, we're going to talk about the definition. We have a short and nice definition, which we'll offer you. Hopefully you like it. Then the vision, overall vision of the path that XDR will take in the future years. Then we're going to talk about challenges. We're going to talk about advantages. We're going to talk about our solution uh, to this and how we're going to approach it. And at the end, we're going to try to give you time to collaborate and talk with us if you're not asleep. So we're going to try to do that in a fairly short amount of time because I know we're already late a little bit. So let's move forward. Let's start with the problem. We have the big guys first. 2022, from the beginning of this year, we have huge, enormous companies who have huge, enormous budgets and spend a lot of money on cybersecurity, hopefully, buying products, buying people. Uh, they're trying to do their best to protect themselves. But nevertheless, we have over a billion dollars of losses just from the beginning of this year. So we have Microsoft, Crypto.com, Ronin, uh, Red Cross, huge, huge companies. So these are the big players. Obviously, we should think about SMEs, no matter the region. Yeah, definitely differences in the understanding of SMEs, but uh, the small and medium players, they have other problems. They cannot spend so much money into managing all different products, making sure they spend enough time of configuring them, updating, making sure they are efficient enough. So this is main problem here. The correlation between alerts. So great thing, we find, found the money, we bought those tools, but now we have all these alerts coming in. How we correlate them, how we deal with false positives. Things that usually are hard to manage, especially by SMEs uh, with limited budgets or limited um, staff. So in this case, high cost, complexity, and ongoing maintenance for SIEM and SOAR solutions are also a problem. Why? Because having XDR bundle without the SIEM and the SOAR, which are like the fundamental things, it's, it's hard to do, let's say, that way. So these are the drivers. Those problems, those issues are actually driving XDR forward and forward. Now the definition, short and nice, obviously there are a lot of options out there, but we have this, let's say, unique, in a way, definition where extended detection response is a vendor-oriented, vendor-specific threat detection and incident response to, which unifies multiple security products into a security operation system. So there is the problem right there, unifying multiple security products right there. Now moving forward, before diving deep into that problem, we're just going to mention the main functions here. So security analytics, without proper analysis of the data that's coming in, and the data should also be timely, the data should be updated regularly. Without this, without those analytics, we cannot take the right decision. It's really hard to do it. It's like... Uh, playing Russian uh, roulette or something. So uh, this is first. Alert, alert cor cor correlation in this time. Uh, this time, again, a huge challenge as well. The incident response here should be something that uh, XDR will help us automate, would help us uh, uh, bring to a higher efficiency level. And definitely the playbook automation, yeah writing playbooks, updating those incident response playbooks, it's a challenge itself. But if we manage to do that, and at the same time automate the process as much as possible, obviously there has to be the human factor, but if let's say 90 plus percent are relating to automation, they will be much more efficient uh, in terms of time and in terms of money, of course. Now, Gardner gave us a great hype cycle here. So you can see where the XDR is right now. That innovation trigger will bring that uh, thing up to a specific peak and people are talking, uh, imagining and adding a lot of stuff to that 
worth XDR. Yeah, it's going to have this and that and this and that. And right now, for the next five to ten years, XDR will go through that process going up, reach the peak where people say, okay, there are some limits to that expectation uh, and to that tool functionalities. And then it's going to drop down slowly towards the normal uh, plateau, plateau in this uh, picture here, you can see that the plate of productivity is where it's going to reach in the next up to 10 years. So there is a lot of way to go. There are a lot of things to be discussed. But obviously, these days, everyone wants to uh, get connected or get into the XDR deal. So the conceptual architecture here, um, this is something that, that we think is, uh, is kind of a straightforward, but again, Nice graph will show you the original way of doing things, and then we're going to give you our way of doing just by adding two more layers. But definitely combining information from EDR, NDR, email, uh, cloud, all kinds of uh, input and all kinds of products, uh, going through a data normalization process where everything is standardized, uh, bringing in to the similar format, and then thrown to the data lake where it's being labeled and in order to be analyzed with the help of machine learning, a uh, huge word that uh, is going to be later discussed by, uh, by my colleague Nick. And then the correlation, something very important to be very accurate, very specific, and uh, very efficient into that data correlation portion. Because if that is messed up, everything else going down will be affected. And then the data obviously goes to like incident response, automation, uh, to the normal workflow, or uh, just feeding API. So moving forward, we're going to touch on challenges. Many vendors, as we said, huge challenge, managing all those products and making sure they work as one, into that one bundle. It's a challenge itself. Obviously, vendors, let's say, uh, someone who provides uh, endpoint protection uh, cannot be uh, doing all kinds of other things by itself. It's hard to do it. It's not impossible, but definitely you have to work with other partners. As our colleague today said, we, we have to work as, as one. So uh, we have to help each other and not see ourselves as uh, each other as competitors. So lower ownership expenses in general expenses uh, during, uh, throughout, after, acquisition as well, efficient product evaluation. So you have all the information needed to evaluate. This is something that was brought up earlier today, to evaluate the efficiency of the product. To evaluate, is this product doing what I, I was expecting to and what I'm paying for? Uh, highly adaptable security model. So it has to adapt to really evolving, really diverse architectures. And effective remediation efforts is something that's a huge advantage because, yeah, we can find something, we can identify there is that, like risk assessment, pen testing, we have automated platforms that would run scenarios for us. There are a whole bunch of stuff, and we, we find the problem. Now, is this the root cause? We have to evaluate. Let's say we find the root cause, but now we have to go through remediation. We have to work with the development team. We have to work with other teams. We have to coordinate everything. We have to retest later on. And this is a process, ongoing process. You cannot, if you're SME, you cannot just hire someone one time and then la next year again. You have to do it more in a more regular manner. So definitely remediation effort will be much more effective. Visibility, searchability, and uh, prioritizing um, into your uh, vulnerability management program, something big. So yeah, a lot of expectations, a lot of advantages, hopefully, to that XDR solution. And now the, the vision, our vision, industry vision here, I would say, would add two more layers to what I just showed you uh, a little before. We have the continuous control monitoring. What does that mean? How often are those controls being monitored if they're doing the right job? Who's challenging them if they're doing the right job all the time, if they're being updated properly, if their efficiency level is to the point where we expect them to be? So this is one thing. And then risk analytics. 
in order to prevent, which is hard, we already discussed that today, yeah, prevention, very hard, but again, it's not impossible to improve in that field. In order to do it, you have to have the right analysis tools, the right information, first of all, and then the, the means to analyze it and get the, uh, the most out of it. Definitely, this is something that we would like to happen. And now, since uh, we're actually uh, moving a little slower than I expected, I would give the word to my colleague, Nick, who's actually uh, been writing books about machine learning. And without people like him, uh, the actual implementation of what we've been talking all day, it's impossible. So a round of applause for my colleague, Nick. Sorry, can you hear? Uh, thank you. Thank you for your time and your attention here, and thank you for Computer 2000 for organizing this amazing event. I'm, uh, you know, CTO of Vox Engineer. This is one uh, young uh, startup company which developed cybersecurity platform. Uh, for now, uh, our platform fits in the shape of SIEM solution, but uh, we develop a lot of features which exceed the SIEM functionalities. Uh, currently, we have uh, integration of uh, more than uh, 100 uh, different type of uh, firewalls, switches, routers, operation system, event logs, and uh, a lot of applications. And uh, we have a team which uh, develop custom integration for our client. So uh, for in the very short period, in a few days, we can integrate any application and any database and uh, any tool at all. Uh, the process of data collection, uh, of course, we have uh, uh, ETL process to transform and normalize the data and uh, in the field of uh, analytics uh, we have a correlation rule from one side uh, our plot platform work as a huge rule engine with uh, predefined thousands of rules in different contexts and from other sides we have currently one graph-based neural network with deep learning for anomaly detection in this is in production and uh, in sandbox we have another set of uh, novel approaches of uh, graph learning models specialized from different contexts for example like uh, malware detection intrusion detection, phishing detection, spam detection. And uh, in the center of our platform uh, is a data lake. And there we have a billions of, of events. And uh, in this data lake, we process uh, from one side with our row engine with predefined tools. From other side, we process the data from our specialized neural networks. And, uh, of course, missing here, but we have uh, detailed monitoring because this is the uh, very important part to have detailed monitoring of uh, uh, any threats, any events, alerts for false positive and to can monitor in one place everything and respond. Uh, currently, we are seeing solution, but we have partially uh, respond, incident respond, realized in some context. And uh, also, we have uh, for now partially uh, automation playbooks. This is features from XDR, but uh, we developed just one platform, and our vision is to integrate. Uh, everything in, in one dashboard to monitor from one place 
uh, endpoint detection and response, network detection, user behavior, linked credentials, uh, threat intelligence, and so on. So we proceed in this direction. And in uh, our next roadmap, uh, we will focus on uh, this set of uh, novel GNN graph-based neural networks specialized in different contexts. And uh, the focus for our next roadmap is in-depth visibility automated detection, threat hunting, root case correlation, response coordination, malicious behavior analytics, and in the, in the long our long uh, target is uh, to can predict the attack in first few steps to predict with our new uh, neural networks uh, the attack and this is the our infrastructure we have integration uh, with a lot of endpoint servers with uh, the biggest uh, cloud providers and all of the data comes to our data lake. In there we process, analyze data and response partially for now. And now is the time for feedback. So Penchok, come on please. Thank you. Ladies, any questions? I mean, it's that's the good part of being the local guys. We're not as big as all the other companies, but we're right next door and uh, We'll be more happy to have a coffee with you, chat, and see your specific use cases. Or if you have any questions. No questions? Uh, just a short question, so I don't hunt you afterwards. Uh, you mentioned some uh, playbooks. Uh, does that mean you can also, let's say, automate certain actions? For example, there is certain event and based on this event, let's say an email is, is triggered to the user who is behind this event generation to ask for confirmation, hey, did you do this activity? And then based on the response, let's say if there is a voting button or a link or something, the application to decide to either escalate to an analyst or to just close the case. Currently we have this feature partially developed in one side. Uh, in, with correlation rule, the user can define the uh, scenarios for any type of behavior and after that uh, can define also in next step the response and the response uh, can be the, the predefined process, step one, step two, step three with, with all of this. But currently this is partially, partially developed but the, in the next roadmap we plan it uh, to fully automate uh, all of this process with uh, Define tennis scenarios and after that, predefine the response with step one to two. All right, thanks. Thank you. Oh, one more question. Yes, hello. I wanted to ask what makes you different and what sets you apart from the other seams in your sort of future roadmap? What do you think is going to help you? win over your customers, over, you know, the choice of other teams. Thank you. Currently, the difference is this uh, partial uh, automatic robotic process. We use blockchain with, uh, we have our, our uh, blockchain database in which each record is encrypted with different key and the whole database is encrypted with master key. And also we have blockchain encryption in certain walls. This is currently different for other CMs now. We can partially uh, develop it options to configure any different scenarios with, uh, with Q and to configure also the response, the, the whole process of response for any scenario. So this is different for now and we will proceed next year uh, in this way. And just to add to what uh, Nick was saying, something non-technical, I would say that we have a new team, uh, we have uh, 
been adding a lot, a lot of people to the technical side, to the sales marketing side. Uh, those people are actually going through performance training. They're going through a lot of uh, different activities related to their mental, physical health. And we have really strong warriors to fight with uh, in the long term. Uh, so we're pretty sure we can reach those goals uh, relatively soon. And we're open to discuss and uh, communicate with everyone interested in uh, joining us in this moment of transition. So that's pretty much it.